okay so today we will start chapter 10 uh, chapter 10 basically uh, so far we have learned how to create a relational schema right so in the relational schema sometimes the design might not be the most efficient uh, so after we create relational schema we create the database but we have to ensure that our database is very efficient which means there should not be any redundancy uh, storage space should be efficiently utilized and all of that so uh, in chapter 10 the chapter actually teaches us how to improve a uh, relational schema design so that if there are any redundancy if there are any um, inefficiency in our database those can be solved so chapter 10 can be divided into two parts the first part is uh, the first part is uh, informal design guidelines for relational database and the second part is formally how we should uh, improve the database design so informal design guidelines are just some theoretical guidelines that we will discuss today and there are four guidelines uh, you just have to remember these guidelines when you are designing your ER and also when you are mapping your schema. So, um, we will today we will go through each of the four guidelines. And the next part or the second part of this chapter is the formal way to uh, change a relational schema so that it um, the redundancies or inefficiencies can be handled. So to do that we use something called functional dependencies and normalization so we will learn this part in the next class so today we will learn only the first theoretical part which is informal design guideline so these design guidelines um, we already know some of them or we use some of them subconsciously but now we have to also consciously remember some of these guidelines so uh, for instance the first guideline is there are two parts of this guideline first is that each row in a relation so tuple in a relation means row in a table okay T uh, relation means table tuple means row so each row in a table should represent one entity or one relationship instance which means that if there is a student table then each row must represent only one single student so multiple student information should not be uh, in that single row and also the second part of this guideline is that attributes of different entity types for instance attributes of employees departments and projects they should not be mixed together into a single table they should be kept se separate so um, if there is any uh, kind of connection between two entity types then that connection must be uh, shown using foreign key uh, no uh, so I'm to this uh, if I have a student table and if I have a uh, if I let's have a student table and a course table then um, student attributes should not be added in the course uh, table and vice versa if I need to connect student and course somehow then it should be connected using foreign keys only so this is guideline number one actor hoche j shop row a act a single entity type in entity by relationship and instance ke represent korte hobe and protector attribute different entity jonno alada rakhte hobe ekshathe mix kora jabe na jodi amar connection dite hoy tahole foreign key diye connection dite hobe so this is guideline number 1 any question about this guideline 1 so guideline one actually I'm not automatically Johan ER diagram Kori we actually follow this. So uh, just take to Mathai Rakha Jinish Tamra Kota Hobe. So next guidelines Dakar Age we will understand what redundant information means and what problems it causes. So redundant information basically means any data that is stored repeatedly unnecessarily mane repeated storage o hoyte hobe unnecessary storage o hoyte hobe so um, sometimes repetitions might be necessary in that case it's different for instance when we are adding foreign keys um, there is repetition of data inside the foreign key column but that is necessary repetition um, but sometimes repetition is unnecessary so if that kind of repetition is there then it is called redundant 
information so redundant information first of all definitely causes storage wastage so we have a limited memory space right our resource uh, memory resource is very limited so we cannot waste the storage by redundant information so that's definitely for the first problem the second problem that redundant information causes is known as update anomaly so anomaly is basically any uh, kind of situation where we are expecting something but something unexpected is happening and that unexpected thing does not always happen as well it is unexpected unexpected and also unpredictable so the same expected unexpected thing also does not happen uh, the same way every single time so these are known as anomalies Okay, so we are expecting something but something else is happening so update anomalies means that when we are trying to insert delete or modify data then certain things may happen that we have not expected or that we do not want to happen so that's called update anomalies and these anomalies may occur if we have redundant information so now we will first of all look at some examples of these anomalies that may happen um, one by one okay So here if we look at this design then we will see that there are some redundant uh, information here right uh, so this these three columns the last three show redundancy in data so the same name the same project name same p location these are repeated multiple times uh, this happened because we actually combined the employee and the project table together so um, employee information and project information are in the same table and the primary key is SSN and P number, the combination of SSN and P number. So now first, uh, if we try to understand what an insertion anomaly can be. So insertion anomaly is when we try to insert something and we uh, theoretically know that it should be, like we should be able to insert that, but because of our bad design, we are not able to insert. Okay, so for instance, here SSN and P number are, uh, together the primary key uh, as a combination so let's say in our company we have a new employee and when a new employee joins we do not immediately assign a project to them we normally give them some training some time passes by and then we assign particular projects to those employees right but if we notice in this um, diagram in this schema if we uh, try to uh, let's say a new employee comes in we know that now we have to insert the information of the employee inside our database right so we have to insert SSN and e name but uh, since project number is not allocated yet uh, we have to uh, insert null for project number and project related information but project number is also part of the primary key and if you remember the entity integrity constraint you cannot have null values for the primary key columns so in this case we cannot insert null so now we cannot insert null in p number therefore we are not being able to also insert the um, value like the um, information of the employee who has joined our company so this is an insertion anomaly i'm trying to insert something but because of my bad design it is not getting inserted um, in my database so insert put the chachi but hochana but i mean theoretical theoretically i know j insert ho uchit into hochana so that is insertion anomaly uh, any questions about insertion anomaly no ma'am so the next part is deletion anomaly deletion anomaly occurs when we are trying to uh, delete one thing but something else get delete, deleted at, as well so if we notice in this diagram in the third row uh, the Narayan Ramesh K this person ha is assigned to a project 3 now this person is assigned to only one project this uh, project number 3 other employees are assigned to multiple projects uh, but this uh, he uh, like Narayan is only assigned to one project now let's say this project gets scrapped I am not going to continue this project in my company. I will delete all information related to this project. Now, if I want to delete this project from here, what happens is because I will uh, the row will get deleted, the information of the employee also gets deleted. 
his uh, SSN and ename will also get deleted. But this should not be the case. I only want to, want to delete the project. The employee will still remain and later on I will assign a different project to that employee, right? So um, if I delete a project which has only one employee in it or uh, like if that employee assigned to it only is assigned to one project, then by deleting the project, the employee is also getting deleted and vice versa will also happen. If I try to uh, delete an employee uh, who is assigned to a project and no other employee is assigned to that project, then the project will also get deleted. Uh, but I don't want to do that, right? So it, that's why um, <coughs> this is a deletion anomaly because I'm trying to delete only project information but also the employee information is also getting deleted from my database. Uh, any question about deletion anomaly? Okay, so um, update anomaly is when I am trying to update one thing but something else is getting updated or when I am trying a lot of things to be updated but everything is not getting updated and there is a data mismatch. Okay, so uh, any of this can be an update anomaly. So, if you see, if I change the P location, let's say um, the Smith, John Smith is shifted to a different location and they will be working on project number one from that location, from the new location. But other employees working in project number one will still, wor uh, still be doing it from the Bel Air location. Now, what happens is if I take the SSN, uh, if I take the P number, and uh, change the location for John Smith then every place where P number is 1 uh, all of it will get changed as well so where, wherever I see P number 1 the P location will change but this is not something that I want right I just want John Smith's P location to change other people's P location to remain the same so because of my bad design uh, actually I'm uh, changing other information that I don't want to change so this is an update anomaly or modification anomaly. Any question? Okay. So this brings us to guideline number two. Guideline number two states that we should design our schema in such that it does not suffer from insertion, deletion and update anomalies. But let's say the database was already created by someone else and you are the software engineer and anomalies are present in the database then you have to note them down and then you have to handle them from the application side from the software side okay uh, but the preferable guideline would be to design a schema that it does not have these anomalies at all um, <coughs> and also these anomalies are very unpredictable tarmane shob anomaly shob shomoy hobe na Mane deletion anomaly akbar hobe abar ek shomoy hobe na erokom hoyte pare so it's not necessary je uh, in a database if there are anomalies present it will always occur sometimes it will not even occur so that's why it is it's difficult to actually manage so it's better to uh, make sure that your schema does not have an anomaly any questions third guideline is that we should design our schema such that there are as few null values as possible so null values is not possible to remove entirely null values will alre always be there or sometimes be there but we should make sure that we are uh, designing in it in such a way that there are as few null values as possible uh, so what is the problem with null values w uh, first of all a lot of space is being wasted Second of all, uh, if you are joining two tables based on their primary key and foreign key, and if there are null values in the foreign key column, then uh, the joining will become problematic because you cannot join based on null value. Uh, we know that two tables must have common values if we want to join. And also interpreting the meaning of null nulls is very difficult because if I see that some column has a null value then it is not clear whether that value is not applicable for the particular entity or whether that value is unknown uh, whether it exists or not or if the value is known to exist but it is unavailable or not so we are not sure when we see a null value what it means 
so that's why it's important that we avoid null values so if i have to give you an example of how we can how we normally avoid null values um so let's say we have let's say we have something like this So employee manages department okay and uh, employee has employee ID and other some other attributes and department has department number and some other attributes okay so this was a one-to-one -one relationship and now we have the employee table and the department table when we are mapping the schema so in the employee table we have ID and all other attributes of employee and in the department table we have department number and all other uh, attributes of department so now this is a one-to-one -one relationship so when we are trying to map the relationship we know that we can use foreign key approach in a foreign key approach the primary key of one table is added as foreign key to the other table I can choose any table to uh, add the foreign key in so je kono ekta table e ami onno table er primary key ke foreign key hisebe add korbo so in this case what happens is um, we can add department number here but if you remember i mentioned in uh, the chapter 7 class that we should try to add it on the total side so this side has a double line this side has a single line which means this is the total participation from department so we should try to add it on department so instead of here we should add the employee id here so why is that because total participation means that every single department has a manager so if i have the employee id here for the manager then every single row will have some valid value right there will be no null values but if i added the department number here then every employee is not a manager right so every employee does not manage so here is a single line for that so if I added department number here for the management which department is being managed then there will be a lot of null values so those employees who don't manage will all have null values so these null values we should avoid so if we add it, add it on this side we can avoid it if both sides were uh, partial then obviously we could not avoid it so. but if uh, both sides have one side has total we can add it on the total side and avoid null values so this will mean that we are actually following guideline num gui gui guideline number three so if i add it here also it will be correct but i will not be following the guideline number three okay um so that's why we do this okay so uh, guideline number three is that we should avoid null values as much as possible any questions okay so the next guideline is guideline number four guideline number four is um, related to join operations so uh, in your lab you probably have learned how to join two tables based on a common column so dhuita table ke join kora junno tadar maach khane ekta common column thaka laga right so uh, if i want to join such tables uh, if my design is poor then it might happen je initially my tables are have correct information but when i join them then i uh, create incorrect information okay so i create erroneous results after joining so let's say let's take this for example we have two tables this is the bad design uh, but just to show how um, joining two tables can create incorrect information i'm showing this so uh, this table has the employee name and the p location and this table has p location as the common attribute with um, the first table so p location is the common attribute so if i want to join these two tables i will join it based on p location okay so after joining based on p location uh, i get this table so in this table every single row that has an asterisk or a star symbol uh, on the left 
is basically an incorrect uh, or has some incorrect information so if we check the first two row the ssn is the exact same for the first two row ssn is the national id of a person so if we look at the name of the person that the names are different because we joined on their location we are actually getting incorrect information so um, this is because obviously the person with the same ssn should also have the same name but here they are having different names so this problem occurs in many many rows where people are, have different names or the project uh, product name for the same product is different and so on so uh, that means our initial design was wrong even though there was no incorrect value in these tables after joining i am creating incorrect tables so we should uh, the guideline number 4 is that we should design our table in such a way that after joining there is no incorrect information and also that the joining is done based on primary key and foreign key pairs so if i have to join two tables they, i have to make sure that they have a primary key and foreign key pair between them only then i can join otherwise i should not join so uh, this is guideline number 4 any questions ma'am last line to my last sentence ta can you to repeat kore jabe আচ্ছা সো এখানে বলছে যে যদি দুইটা টেবিলকে জয়েন করতেই হয় তাহলে ইউ হ্যাভ টু মেক শোর যে ওই দুইটা টেবিলে প্রাইমারি কি এবং ফরেন কি এর পেয়ার আছে তার মানে ধরো যেমন এমপ্লয়ি টেবিলে যদি ডিপার্টমেন্ট নাম্বারের একটা ফরেন কি থাকে তাহলে আমি ডিপার্টমেন্ট টেবিল আর এমপ্লয়ি টেবিলকে জয়েন করতে পারবো কারণ দুইটা টেবিলে একটা প্রাইমারি কি এবং একটা ফরেন কি এর পেয়ার আছে মানে কানেকশান আছে সো এরকম কানেকশান থাকলেই আমি জয়েন করতে পারবো আদারওয়াইজ করতে পারবো না ইন দিস কেস দুইটা কলমে যদিও সেম কলম ছিল বা সেম কলম নেম ছিল তাদের মধ্যে প্রাইমারি কি ফরেন কি এর রিলেশনশিপ ছিল না সো দ্যাটস ওয়াই এখানে জয়েন করাতে আমার প্রবলেম হয়েছে সো প্রাইমারি কি ফরেন কি রিলেশনশিপ না থাকলে জয়েন করতে পারবো না ইজ ইস ক্লিয়ার ওকে এনি আদার কোয়েশ্চেন্স আচ্ছা সো টুডে উই উইল স্টপ হিয়ার সো উই হ্যাভ গন থ্রু দ্য ফোর ইনফর্মাল গাইডলাইন্স ওকে যে আমরা কি মনে রাখতে হবে দিস গাইডলাইন্স ওয়েন উই আর ক্রিয়েটিং আওয়ার স্কিমা সো এগুলো হচ্ছে থিওরেটিক্যাল এবং এবং ইনফর্মাল সো দেয়ার ইজ নো পার্টিকুলার রুলস টু অ্যাকচুয়ালি ফলো দিস এগুলো জাস্ট থিওরেটিক্যালি মনে রাখতে হবে অ্যান্ড দেন উই হ্যাভ টু জাস্ট Uh, try to apply them when we are uh, designing our database next uh, part of this chapter seta hocche formally kibhabe amra ekta kichu inefficient design ke efficient banate parbo seta amra dekhbo so shegulo amra functional dependency and normalization diye kori so ajke actually start korbo na because i will probably need some more time to finish this uh, and we don't have enough time left so um i mean next class e eta start korbo shuru theke instead of uh, doing a little bit today and like match khan theke stop na kore i will start in next class so do you have any questions regarding to what we have done so far